So we're going to talk about personal moats. We're going to talk about career loops. We talked about, yeah, comparing it to tech products, just like they have moats. You should too. What is a moat? It's a set of unique and accumu accumulating comparative advantages in the context of your career. Um, like company moats, your personal moat should be uh, specific to you uh, and, and not only durable, but compounds over time. So it should be something that's hard to learn and hard to do so that it's, it's, uh, it's hard to reverse engineer. It's hard to copy. It's hard to imagine. Like you want someone to be like, how does this person even do what they do? <laughs> um, and, 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 uh, one question to ask is like, what, what's easy for easier for you to do that, but harder for others that when that looks hard, something that you do, that's just sort of natural to you. For me, it's community building. I sort of, you know, getting things like on deck off the ground or new categories, you know, seems hard to some other people. It seems, it just seems natural to, to me. And so. Uh, everyone has their own version uh, of that. And I actually didn't realize that community building was, was an unfair advantage for me until I was maybe 25 and to, until I'd just sort of done it a bunch and then realized, oh, wow, this is, uh, this is something I'm, I'm good at. But there were no signs in my childhood that, or, or even before 25 that I had any special expertise um, in this. Uh, so part of it is like, but I did enjoy it. And so part of it is the disposition, skill set, um, uh, and then, you know, where the opportunity is. We'll get into Ikigai in, in a bit. Um, so yeah, unique to your own talents and interests, we just mentioned, um, and legible in the sense that it should be, um, easy to see, e easy to show, you know, people sometimes like, oh, I have this special thing, but if people can't, if you can't manifest that somewhere in a way that people could be like, oh, wow, this is proof of work. You know, Rishi's great at this, Jeeves is great at that. Then, um, then it, it, it's, it's not as important. Um, a few examples, um, Tyler Cowen. Uh, is a economist and, and blogger, and he's just a, you know, encyclopedic, uh, you know, has an encyclopedic brain. And for someone to try to recreate Tyler Cowen, um, you know, it, it would just, it would take decades. Uh, and, and people just sort of, there's this line about, you want to be so good that people are inspired to be so good at what they, what they do. And, or, you know, sort of like realize they'll never be as good at you as you in, in your thing. <laughs> and so Tyler Cowen is that in terms of just um, you know, his, his, his knowledge base, um, and, and, and his, he's manifested that through his blog that he's he written, I believe for like 15 plus years now, every single day. Um, Tim Ferriss, uh, is, is another one in, in terms of, uh, just having an incredibly loyal, uh, following in, in terms of his building his empire around his sort of unique, uh, areas of, of expertise. Um, Kim Mai is another one in terms of being at the intersection of, of technology and, and policy, um, and, uh, and, and bridging those, those two worlds together through, through her writing and, and, and investing as we, yeah, what, what's easier for me to do, but, but hard for others, what, what's something I have that's very difficult for other people to reverse engineer, or maybe I don't have it today. Like I didn't have community building, but I could see myself having it. If I, if I spend more time on it, Ikigai, uh, you know, what, what's the intersection between what you love, what the world needs, what you're good at, and, and what, what can be paid for, or, or what you could be paid for. Passion, mission, profession, vocation.